Aquarium fertilization is actually easy. All you have to do is learn the basics, find a fitting fertilizer, work your way up to the recommended amount and adjust over time. In the following 7 minutes, I will walk you through each of those steps while putting on some relaxing music. So stick around. First, learning the basics. You don't have to be an expert on every single nutrient as a regular aquarium hobbyist. But it is good to know at least a little bit about what you are pouring in your tank. And understanding fertilization is the key to mastering it. I won't be able to cover the entire topic in this video, but I will give you a quick overview. Nutrients are one of the three pillars of plant life and growth, along with light and CO2. The plant always consumes those three things at a certain ratio. That just means that if you add a lot of nutrients, you also need to have a lot of light, because the plant can't use those nutrients without it. Same goes for CO2. Nutrients are commonly separated into two categories, macro and micronutrients. With macros being taken up in big amounts, while micronutrients are only taken up as traces. For freshwater aquarium plants, the macronutrients are nitrogen, phosphate and potassium. And some also include magnesium. The main micronutrient is iron and a ton of other stuff. If you already know a little bit about chemistry and biology, you will realize that nitrates are based on nitrogen and plants are able to use it. Nitrates will appear naturally in your aquarium as the end product of the nitrification process. As soon as plants, animals or other things somehow decompose in your aquarium, nitrate will appear. And the same goes for phosphate. Potassium, on the other hand, does not really develop in your aquarium in such a natural way. With this knowledge, you can also explain why overfeeding the tank leads to algae growth. Too much fish food leads to too much nitrate and phosphate, which then benefits the growth of algae, because the excess macronutrients can't be used by the plants. It also brings up the question if you even need to fertilize, since the main nutrients can be supplied by adding bioload to the tank. And you clearly have to answer it with no. If you don't want to keep plants with high demands and have quite some livestock in the tank, only adding food can work really well. There are also fertilizers that contain all the necessary nutrients except nitrogen and phosphate, meant for heavily stocked community tanks. More on that in a minute. But as soon as you go into tanks with a lot of plants and less fish, or into very demanding plants that need very stable and optimized nutrient supply, you will have more success with a good fertilization routine. If you want to learn more about this, I have linked some things in the description you might want to look into. While the whole nutrition matter seems very complicated at first, you will get into it pretty fast. For the first years in this hobby, I always avoided fertilization as a topic and just used the first fertilizer I got my hands on, without really understanding what I was doing. When I understood the basics, I was able to make an informed decision on which fertilizer I wanted to use, and my plant health massively improved. Now let's go to the second step, the informed decision. I feel like this is a step that is being overcomplicated most of the time. And lots of people try to find the only right fertilizer. That's where the thumbnail comes from. Because which fertilizer you use exactly doesn't really matter for the most part. The person or company developing a fertilizer and getting it on the market probably knows more about the topic of fertilization than we will ever know. Of course, you have to make some decisions considering your type of fertilization, meaning if you want to dose a big amount once a week or small amounts daily, and also considering your style of tank. If you want to get into Dutch style for example, you will do best with a fertilizer that is developed for this type of tank, like Masterline, which is what I use. While the ADA fertilizers are more of a lean type fertilization that are meant for nature style aquariums with slower growth in general. One example for good beginner fertilizers are the Tropica fertilizers. There are two versions, the specialized and the premium version. While the specialized fertilizer contains all the necessary nutrients, the premium version does not contain any nitrogen or phosphate because it was developed for community tanks with not too many plants and a good amount of livestock. The nitrogen and phosphate will be supplied by the fish food, as I explained before. If you don't have a lot of animals in your tank, but a lot of plant mass, the specialized version might be the right fertilizer for you. The advantage of an all-in-one fertilizer like this one is that it makes it very easy to start, and it contains nutrients in a tested and optimized ratio. But this can also be a disadvantage, because you are not able to change anything about it. If you realize your plants lack macronutrients, you can't really increase those without adding more micronutrients as well. That's why there are more advanced fertilization concepts. The one that I use is the Masterline concept, which consists of the Masterline 1 and 2 fertilizer. Masterline 1 contains all the micros, while Masterline 2 is a macro fertilizer. Although the two nutrient types are still fixed in a certain ratio, you can change the ratio of micro and macronutrients. That being said, the Masterline fertilizers are developed for heavily planted tanks, with a lot of fast growers. That's why they are popular among the Dutch-style aquascapers. 
it is possible to get even more advanced. The Seacam fertilization concept, for example, allows you to add all of your important nutrients separately, which gives you maximum control and flexibility, but also a lot of work, since the recommended dosing schedule is quite complicated. There's also the possibility to mix your own all-in-one fertilizer with salts. But this is really a thing for pros. And I would claim that for 99.9% .9 of the aquarium hobbyists, there are better opportunities to improve. In general, I would not recommend a very advanced fertilization to most hobbyists, since you can only benefit from it if you keep up with the routine. And for most people like me, keeping up is much easier if you have to add one or two liquids once a week. To get an impression on what fertilizers might be right for you, just look around for tanks you like, on Instagram for example, and look what the person is using, and you will get a good impression pretty fast. If you narrow it down to a few products many people are using for setups like the one you want to do, just pick one and try it out. For the third step, starting to use the fertilizer, just rely on what is recommended on the bottle for the start, since the manufacturer probably ran a lot of tests to find this recommendation. So when it is time to start fertilizing after a few weeks, start with 50% of the recommendation and then work your way up to the recommended amount over the course of a few weeks. One thing I learned about aquariums is that stability is almost always better than perfection, meaning that it is much more important to keep stable nutrient levels than hitting the perfect spot after a lot of experimenting. In a stable environment, plants will outcompete algae, but when the conditions change a lot, algae will always be adapting faster. Of course, this is only the case when the conditions are favorable for the plants. So if you have way too few or many nutrients, the plants will either die or algae will make use of the extra nutrients. But if you choose a good fertilizer and stick to the recommendation, you will end up in favorable conditions. It can be necessary to adjust if you see your plants show symptoms of deficiency or you still have lots of algae after two or three months. In those cases, research the symptom or algae and adjust your dosage accordingly. But this will only be fine-tuning most of the time and you will have pretty good results even before that. One thing I can't stress enough is, don't be afraid of this topic. If you informed yourself a little bit on nutrients and you just do what is written on the bottle, you are very likely going to have great success. Most products nowadays have been developed for a long time and if many people are using them, they will work for you as well. I made this video because I was overcomplicating this topic myself until I just decided to try masterline fertilizers and although I did something completely stupid for the first time, I fertilized the recommended amount from day one, I still had a lot more fun and success with this aquarium than with any tank I had before. The tank achieved stability regardless of what I did. If this video was helpful for you, give this video a like, so it will be recommended to more people who might benefit from it. I'll see you in the next one.